Hi, and welcome to Candace Speaks. Um, if it's your first time here, please subscribe to the station, um, like, and uh, hit the notification button so you know when I'm coming on. And please share, please share, and join into the conversation. Come and enjoy this. It's all fun. It's just some fun. We, you know, we do some recaps of some of the reality TV shows, and we talk, we talk about true life stuff too, and how to be best at it. You know, how to be our greatest. So that is the biggest part for me. Like we don't have to live in, in confusion. Anyway, I've been gone for a little bit, you guys. And um, I really did miss y'all, but I was not under a rock. I did pick up this part in a play at the very last minute I was called in. And so I had to take off this time because the play was going up in two weeks and I was called in for this play. So I had to put all my time and energy into the play, you guys. But it's an amazing play. It was so worth it. It's called No, Not My Son. And now we're moving into San Francisco. We'll be going to um, the Opera House in San Francisco. So it was worth it as much as I missed you guys. But I was not under a rock. And I did see that. So I've been gone about almost a month now. Um, I did see that Pedro wants a divorce, honey. Family Chantel. We're talking family Chantel. You know, this is a spinoff from 90 Day Fiance. Chantel and Pedro. Pedro filed for a divorce. I'm like, what? What? Pedro? What? Pedro said he done. He said he is tired. I had to do a marathon all the way back from 90 Day Fiance up to now. The family Chantel, just so I could remind myself about these two. Because the thing is, everybody's saying it's a scam. Oh my God, and that Pedro was a scammer. Do you think so? Y'all think he was scamming? Or do you think Chantel pushed him away? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, what do you think? I mean, let me share this screen real quick. Because there's so much involved with these two. Or should I say, with the whole family. Where is it? Or families. There was just too many people involved. There were so many people involved in their little lives, you guys. So, okay, so what's going on right now is uh, Pedro did file for divorce. It, we know that to be true, to my understanding. <laughs> basically May 22nd. He actually did file for divorce. And um, and Chantel actually did a countersuit and they both have restraining orders against each other. And uh, I guess Chantel is dating now, but whatever. So the build up to this whole divorce, because that's what I wanted to say, like, when did this happen? What happened? So as I'm looking at season four, just all of season four of Family Chantel, you can see where they started getting disgruntled. You can see, first of all, their whole marriage has been a roller coaster of emotions. Pain, hurt, mad, anger, and, and uh, confusion, all this poor thing. And every now and then they got a chance to have some happiness. You wonder how much happiness they had in these six, seven years that they've been together. Okay. Um, but what you do hear Pedro saying, and you can see that they've evolved, at least Pedro has, between when they first got married. Uh, Pedro was 24 years old. Chantel was 25. They're now 30 and 31, something like that. Pedro's evolved. He's not the little boy anymore. He actually wants to do, have a, a life. He, he, he wanted his independence. He said that Chantel was selfish. He said that she was not a team player and that she was no, not supporting him after he supported her all those years. Now, mind you this, people are going to say he laid around on her for the first year. Again, you guys know when they come in with these K-1 visas, they're not even allowed to work. They have to apply to work. And then they get this um, application. It's called EAD or something like that, um, that allows them to work. But that's all the process. It takes, you know, five, six, seven months. But when he did get his work permit, let's just call it that, his working permit, he went to work. And he worked in a warehouse, something he did not like to do, but he did it while Chantel went to school because she was going to school to become a registered nurse. She was going for a bachelor's degree. And she did get it. But do y'all remember, I think it was back in 2019, in one of the um, episodes where he was pissed off because she was supposed to graduate and she didn't. And I think it was like one class short or something like that. And he was very upset about it because... That was prolonging him 
having to wait before he can pursue his own careers and having to stay in that warehouse. And he just knows that he's not meant to be in a warehouse, that he meant he's meant to have a career. And you know his mother, do y'all know his mother is a lawyer? She's educated. And his sister has a degree. She's he's from an educating educated background. You know, these people have goals. Uh, we'll get into that. But with that being said, what you see in these episodes, because the question is, is he scamming her? Was it all the scam? Did he literally wait seven years and decide, okay, I'm done. I've done my time with you. I'm ready to go and do my thing. Or did he really love her and she pushed him away? Do you think she could have pushed him away, y'all? When y'all really pay attention to Chantel, she real pretty. Oh, she's shapely. The girl is just as cute as she want to be. But the light bulb is dim. <laughs> She's a little different. Quirky. Her family's kind of quirky. They different. That's why they make good TV. Because they are, they don't have that much ration, rationale. Although, really, I think it's Chantel. The other ones actually do, but they should support each other. When she when that mama says one all for one and one for all, she means that whether it makes sense or not. But mom actually makes a lot of sense. She's just very quirky and dramatic the way she does things. And Winter's not stupid. None of them are stupid. But they don't want, I feel like they're not looking at Chantel for what's really going on. They they really decided that Pedro is scamming and he's been a scammer all this time. Really? After seven years and you guys befriended him and became his family and he was so respectful to the whole family. He really was. I don't care if they did almost have a fight or had a fight because there were times where he had to just defend himself, Period. Period. Like when River jumped up and hit that light and Pedro crossed that table so quick, <laughs> he crossed that table. Hey, you can't just be jumping bad at people and think they're not going to come back at you. All right. Anyway, Pedro, I think he tried. I really, I feel like even in their home, by the time we started seeing this real tension, I think it was just late. He asked for a break. He had Chantel. He just couldn't communicate. He said she just didn't get it. He couldn't. And you couldn't you see that? Like he couldn't really communicate with her. He would say one thing and she she thinks she's doing what's right, but she just didn't get that. When the man said he needed a break, like just be quiet. Like just try to understand me. Do do what you want. Try to do what I'm asking and not what you think you want. She just didn't get it. Oh, the poor thing. She just didn't think like that. So, so specifically, let's talk about the friends. Let's talk about him working. Why didn't she just join in and become a part of his real estate family? Do you know how much kind of money you can make in real estate? I used to sell real estate. I did. Just so you know, I'm not. Also, this is hilarious. Also, I was a registered nurse for over 25 years. That's where I retired from. I just retired a year ago. In nursing. So I understand all of that. I understand the work that she had to do. It didn't take me 10 years, but I understand that. And I was a single mom. Um, but also selling real estate. I understand everything that goes with the dynamics of selling real estate and the networking and the camaraderie. And so I hear where he was coming from. Poor Pedro. He's out there hustling. Yeah, you put hours in. You put in time. You put in social time. And instead of her getting jealous about that, she should have participated. He, he she should have, and she should have had fun with his coworkers and, and, and the people that he was meeting. Uh, people love seeing families come together, but instead, she decided she wasn't getting enough time. She wanted her time because she had be, she'd gotten so used to him, pinky, 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 peeking her, you know, and she was everything, and him just being there for her. But that's all he knew. He was brought into the United States with her under a visa, and he clinged to her. He clinged to her. He didn't have to. Now, this is where people say that maybe he was scamming. He knew he did what he had to do to get through the years that he needed before he could apply for his citizenship. But the reality is he could have applied for his citizenship within, what, five years? He had his green card. He could have applied for his citizenship, but he went a couple of more years because he was actually, I think, working on his marriage. 
all the way to buying that house together. And if you look at some of his videos, when he says, you know, maybe this will get her into more of a family mode, will get her into more of a family mode. Because, you know, her parents, Karen, mama, <laughs> really was looking forward to having grandchildren. He was like, mm -mm, no, because when they did get in that house, things did not get better. She didn't grow up any. And one thing she he keeps saying is she just stayed stuck at 24. Like he couldn't communicate with her. She had no growth. She's still the same person that wants to rip and run these streets and hang out with her girlfriends and take trips all the time. She wasn't domestic at all. So when, when she was in school and he was working, he was working, cleaning and being the man and everything to her being everything to her, supporting her. But when it became his time, she was still that little young teenage slob. Ooh, okay, maybe I shouldn't say it like that. But her habits didn't change. She's Like her mama said, she's not domestic. Okay, but you know, there's a time in marriage that you have to just do kind of what makes it work. So whether you were domestic, if you know your husband likes to come home to a clean house, and now he's working 12, 14, 16 hours a day. You can't pick up some clothes and cook some dinner real quick. And yeah, you can go out sometimes. You can even get a maid if you want to. But can you get it done? Can he come home to that? Can he see that you're willing to go a little above and beyond and not just stay stuck? And that would get on anybody's nerves. I don't know how many of y'all married, whatever. I am. And I can tell you, there have been many times I've jumped up, jumped up before my husband came home and said, oh, let me at least do this. So it, so it looks, you know, I, I mean, I, and I, I like to keep things clean anyway. But I will go above and beyond for, beyond for my husband because he deserves it. Especially when you know, I'm retired. I'm at home now, too. She's a nurse. She works three days a week. She's working part time. And that's where his frustration was coming in. She working part time. You're at home all day. He's working all day. He has to start asking you now. So you're not even doing this automatically. He has to ask you, well, can you at least wash the clothes while I'm gone and maybe pick up a little bit? You know, maybe. And he has to come home to every everything he asks you to do is still the same. OK, I'm sure that didn't happen just one episode. I think that is their root. The routine of their marriage and he was getting tired of it because this is a man who wants to be married he wants to have a family but he did not see her as that family wife mother and how could you did anybody see it just because you say the words don't mean you're ready he got burnt out with her i that's what i believe do i think it's a scam no I don't think it's a scam. Now, there have been some episodes. There have been some episodes earlier on when they were talking about, I think his friend Obed was talking to Chantel and telling her that the sister and the mother set him up and set her up and, and would pushed him into marrying Chantel because of, of um, citizenship so that he could bring them over. Okay. <laughs> And at one point that he might have been a part of that whole situation, not purposely, but because, you know, he supports his mother and his sister. Let me just go back a little bit. Those two met when they were 24, 25 years old. And supposedly they were met, introduced through a friend, uh, one of her friends, because she wanted to learn Spanish. And I guess he was going to be her Spanish tutor. And when she saw his picture, she, you know, she thought he was cute. He, she, he thought she was cute. So she went to the Dominican Republic and they met and they liked each other. They started dating from a distance. She visited out there several times. And over the year, he asked her to marry him, but probably before 90 Day Fiance. Um, they were smitten. They were young. They were in love. Let me do I have that picture. Uh, let's see. I don't want to stop sharing right there. Isn't that cute? See how cute they were? Do y'all remember those days being that young and in love and cute? I think they were just young and they were in love. So she brings him over. This is where, uh, 
90 day fiance kicks in. She brings him over, but she don't tell her family. So she started the whole lie. Was it him? She started the whole lie, told them that he was there on a, a, a school visa, education, something like that, visa. When actually he was there on a K-1 visa. And she had him hold up to this lie. He didn't want to do it. He felt bad about it. He, the boy is respectful. He had been respectful from day one. He was very nice to his, her family. Uh, so the lie started with her. And she did it all the way to like the day or two days before they were getting married and then finally told her parents, oh my God. And they were all up in arms. Her friends were up in arms because they were like, you don't know if he's scamming you. Okay, well, I'm glad she went with her heart. And so did he. Because they're such a cute couple. Aren't they cute? They were a cute couple. All the drama that came with these two because of families, uh, and people want to call him a scammer. Well, he hung in there for seven years, six, seven years, as they had all kinds of fights between the families. Uh, Chantel's family finally accepted him because he's probably a really good son-in-law. I think she lost a good guy, honestly. Um, she was always battling with his family. Let me just say this. if Y'all y'all got to go back and we'll do a marathon, too, with this. The way Chantel used to talk to his mother, and I know her mama used to, be, she used to go at her too. But let me just say this. I ain't going after nobody, mama. I prefer to sit quiet and just exit and not be around them before I disrespect your mother. And as a sister or a daughter of the mother, not that I condone Nicole. Nicole was crazy and she caused a lot of friction. Don't come for my mama. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think he was really calm the way he tried to deal with her and just tell her to just be quiet, you know, because she was very offensive. Chantel don't have a filter. She don't know when to stop. Do you know you can get your point across, but there's a point where you have to just stop and let it go. Move forward. I felt like she used to go over there and her family and talk to them like they were ignorant. You know, people have a tendency that when you're talking to somebody who does not speak English, but they're trying to speak English, you think that they don't comprehend well, period, and that they just don't get stuff. So you start talking to them louder, like that makes sense, because <laughs> you think that's going to make them understand. When in all actuality, you're just, they're just speaking a different language. You don't know how well they process because you're not necessarily speaking their language. But there's nothing dumb about his mother. She's an attorney. There's nothing dumb about his sister. She has a master's or no, a bachelor's degree, I think in communications or something. These kids were raised to be respectful and to have and, and to have a desire and to grow in life and be productive and to have careers. When you hear Pedro speak, he speaks well. His English, of course, is broken because it's not his primary language, but his thought processing, really pay attention to what he says and then really pay attention to Chantel because she doesn't get it. Even when her girlfriend was trying to talk to her, when, when, when Chantel was, you know, always consoling her girlfriend about how she and Pedro are not getting along and Pedro always wants to hang out with the people at work and he doesn't come home and all this. And the girlfriend's trying to give her insight and trying to tell her how to deal with things. The girl don't get it. She decides she's going to go to an outing that Pedro's at with his after work for, with his uh, coworkers, but she wasn't going to be friendly. She was going to confront folks and still make things worse. He's already mad at you. Y'all barely speaking. Why would you do that? Because she ain't got no sense. Did you want your relationship or not? She's forever crying about how she wants this relationship as she continued. She was pushing me away. That girl was getting on my nerves. I girl, what part of give this man a break? I feel like if she had just given him a break, when they called themselves separated in that house together, <laughs> He said she was knocking on the door, sitting at the door and crying and then yelling one minute, crying the next minute. He just said, Dad, can I get a break? He just wanted to get a break and process. I don't think he would have filed them papers if she hadn't stole that money. 
when he moved out, I think he still would have still been trying to figure out how to deal with this girl. But he just realized he outgrew her and that she wasn't growing. And I agree. How do you stay with somebody that you have outgrown? Looks are not everything and they will not keep you. She could be as fit and fine as she want to be, but honey, the bulb is not light. It's not bright. It's as dim as it was to be. And every you gonna eventually just start looking at that light bulb like, girl. And I, I, I feel sorry for Chantel because I don't know, girl, you're going to have a hard time getting a keeper that's not going to take advantage of you. That quirkiness. You know, they said um, Drake dropped into her DMs. <laughs> I don't trust the source. I'm just saying <laughs> I heard about this source. But even if the source, he don't want you, girl. He don't. He just think you cute. He's seen you on the show. He was dating Rihanna. Not because she's just pretty. <laughs> then they were saying that she is dating, oh my God, the rich dollars. Now, come on, y'all. What you think about that? I, I shouldn't even laugh because I feel bad for her. He is the creep squad himself. Creep squad, another one. You're just going to be a notch on his belt. He dates nuts like the Erica Menace. They might be nuts, but they're not quirky. He, they, I don't think she's capable of knowing what a filter is like or, 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 or really processing, knowing when to stop. Let me just give an example. You know when Pedro went out looking for his dad and he met up with his brothers. But dad never shows up, never wants to talk to him. And he's trying to talk to his mom about it. Mom does not really want to talk about it. You know why she don't want to talk about it? Because she knows it's hurtful. It hurt her. And as strong as she is, as strong as the face, the, she, the facade she puts on. Y'all know that woman was hurt? She dated a married man. Now, supposedly, I think the first year she didn't know he was married, supposedly. You know, um, but he was providing. Then she goes off and has a child for him, Pedro. Continues to date him. This man is never really there for you because he has a whole nother family somewhere else that he is there for. Can you imagine that? God. And then you go off and have Nicole. You don't think she embarrassed? And she tries to she tries to cover it by saying, "Well, he paid for my college, and you know, uh, this is just how it is. It's just not a lot of men in, in, in the Dominican Republic, and this is just what happens. All that is to save face. You cannot tell me that woman wasn't broken, but she was going to keep moving. You cannot tell me that it didn't hurt her to watch her kids go without a father, and her son hurting all those years of his life, and that is still hurting him. You can't say that it's not hurting her. She puts on a face. Pedro knows that." They're they're women that are, are feisty and they don't they're they don't want to show humility or vulnerability, but there's a lot of pain there. Pedro knows that. Pedro's mother knows that. Everybody knows it. How can you not know that? Look at your situation. When Pedro was there and he wanted Chantel's support because he was hurting, he was giving her an opportunity to be there for him. And all that girl could think about was still throwing jabs at his mama. Well, just don't forget that it's your mother's, it's because of your mother that you're in. Who does that, that you're in this situation? He said, that's enough. I can't even talk to you. I'm so done. He was done after that. He was. I say that was the, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. He was already sick of her. He's already sick of the fact that he can't communicate with her because she just don't, it doesn't, it doesn't process right. It doesn't process, it doesn't make sense. What she does doesn't make sense. And she doesn't have a filter. She can't help. I don't think she's capable. She, she, she might be a little bit on the spectrum or something. Because, you know, there are parts of the spectrum where you just don't have no rationale. You can do everything else, but you just don't have no rationale. And she seems to lack rationale. 
Common sense would have said you don't start. The boy is hurt. We all know it's because the mom allowed herself to be in a relationship that she was never, he was never going to be a part of the family. You don't think Pedro knows that, but you're going to keep stabbing him. Well, just don't forget your mother's. I want you to know who has your back. It's his mother, ding dong. <laughs> so anyway, like she kept saying, well, I think things changed after he came to the DR. But she was still trying to blame the mother. Well, girl, it changed because of you. Your relationship, your relationship went completely south after that because of Chantel. Not because of the situation of him finally getting all the information about mom and grandma and, and, and father and brothers. and all. That wasn't it. He already he lived that. He's just got more of a picture of it. It's all forgivable, too, because he loves his mother. We ain't gonna forgive you because you the person he loves the most is mama. You keep trying to make her a bad person. You keep trying to throw her under the bus. And when he went home, and then he just he just couldn't tolerate it no more. And I get it. That's all I'm gonna say. And this and the girl's a tit for tat person. You know, you can't even have a conversation with her without her wanting to come back at you. Instead of just she, she just doesn't get it. So when, when she left, because I'm telling you, she still had an opportunity. I think she still, I think the boy was just trying to leave and get a break. When she stole that money, who does that? And doesn't have a problem with it? And saying stuff like, well, we're just going to figure it out. What is there to figure out? Half, 50%. You keep wanting to say how when y'all did have this shared account, how he spent 5000 here and 5000 You should have addressed that then. But it's, you don't walk away with everything. But she did it because she was looking for attention, any kind of attention at that point. He wasn't the same loving person that he had always been because he couldn't see her the same. He realized this girl does not get it. She ain't never going to get it. She can be as cute as she wants. He didn't even see cute no more. And do you know that happens for real? Do you know that happens? Yeah. With men and women. You can have a man who is so fine, but he's so mean and nasty. Oh, whatever. And you will not see cute again. You just want him to leave you alone. And that's when you realize beauty is uh, beyond skin. It is deep. It comes from character. Who is your inside? Who are you on the inside? Do I think Pedro scammed Chantel? No. Do you think he scammed Chantel? Or you think she pushed him away? All them tears. Does a tear matter when you cry and still do the same thing over and over again? <laughs> I'm just saying. Does a tear matter when you crying all the time and saying what you're not going to do and you do, it, you do it the very next day and the next day and the next day and the next day? Eventually you get tired of hearing, I'm sorry. Right? Am I wrong? Please, can you tell me am I wrong? I'm just, I'm just saying. I know for me, I only want so many apologies on the same thing. And then I'm going to say the same thing. No, you're not sorry because your, your actions have not changed. It's just words at this point. He was burnt. Poor, he was so hurt. Y'all didn't see the hurt in him when he went to that attorney. You know, he went for information. And let me just say this. If he really wanted to scare her, don't you the first thing he would have done is go to an attorney, go to an attorney and say, okay, how soon can I get about this without causing an issue? <laughs> he never did that. I think he genuinely was trying to make it happen. And when you're young, you deal with a lot more stuff. And as time gets going and you and you're really realizing that you're trying to evolve and have your life and become independent and become be great, be great for yourself. Um, and then you can all of a sudden look at your partner and realize that they're not really on your side. That the team play is, is not being a team player anymore. Could we not just rip it and run them streets? Somebody still wants to rip and run. The other one wants to get on course and start being a partnership that develops. Yeah, I think that's what happened. He wants to, to develop. And she wants to rip it around the streets and still be this little girl, but says, I want to have a baby. Girl, you ain't ready for no baby. <laughs> She's not ready. I think I'm just going to wrap it up there because, um, you know, you really have to go do a marathon. I have so much stuff written down, but 
is it over? Has the divorce actually gone through? It's the question. Do you think it was a scam? I say no. Mm -mm. I think that boy was hurt. I think when he went to that attorney, he was hurt. I, what made him go back to that attorney and say, file them papers, was when she stole that money and refused to just give half of it back. And again, I'm going to say for women, you know when you become desperate in a situation and, and the man who used to love you so much and all of a sudden he's not giving you any uh, attention. Women, my brother told me this a long time ago, <laughs> that you'll do anything. You'll even take negative attention. I'm just going to share this with y'all. When I was 22, maybe 23, 24 years old, I was dating my son's father. We dated for like seven years. He was my first love. First love. Oh, my God. And he was known everywhere. He used to have this bad Corvette, right? And he hurt my feelings. He was cheating on me. <laughs> we were young, right? And um, he had been ripping around the street with this girl. We all knew it because, again, he was very popular. And I had my own popularity. You know, we were known as a couple. So when they start would see him with this other chick. Oh, it's in Las Vegas, y'all. Running through Las Vegas back in the day. I was always told I, it was a lot. Um, and, and finally, one day I went over there and scratched up his car. <laughs> I mean, and then I called my brother to tell him. And my brother said, Why do you do that? He said, You know, you're just looking for any kind of attention at this point. I'll never forget this. I'm 55 years old now. And that was when I was in my early 20s. But I'll never forget it because he was right. My Feelings were hurt. I didn't know how to deal with my emotions back then. And I wanted any of any kind of attention at that point because right now you have been running over here with this girl. And I was hurt. I scratched up that man's car. Well, Chantel, that's basically what she did. She took that man's money. That's even worth $268,000. She wanted any kind of attention. But that was robbery, I think. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think about this whole Chantel and Pedro thing. And was it a scam? Was it her family's fault? Because they swear it was a scam. They so flip-floppish. You can't trust them. But that's what a family will do. They were his friend for a minute. River was his friend. Everybody was loving on Pedro. And then all of a sudden, when they start having problems, oh, yeah, we knew it was going to happen. Now y'all done totally flipped on him. You can't even trust that family. You couldn't. And that's why he said, I can't trust. I can't, I can't even trust your people. They was all accepting of him and everything for a minute. And, and, and then just because, why didn't they just see that there's a problem and have a conversation about what's really going on in your relationship? How come y'all could not, first of all, why is it such a scam? Do you not believe that Chantel can get a man? Maybe. So he had to be scamming. He couldn't have just loved her. He couldn't have just loved her. It had to be a scam. That says a lot about what they think about her, that he couldn't have come here just because they, he loved her. And how come it couldn't just be her or a problem within their marriage? How come it couldn't, couldn't just be that they just are not working? Why did it have to be a scam and they start dogging him out like that? That was wrong, too. I feel bad for Pedro. And I hate to say a lot of people in the streets are on poor Pedro. They're against Pedro. They're calling you a scammer. But Pedro, I don't think so. And I think Chantel lost a good guy. I hope I'm right. I'm right. I don't think so, Pedro. You looked hurt for real. You really did look hurt. But I get it. You got somebody and you realize it was really just a pretty face. I hope she gets it one day. She's 31 years old. Dang, the clock is ticking. And please don't be running around with no rich dollars, girl. He gonna hurt your feelings. Drake is not interested in you. Go find you a regular person. Let a regular person find you, whatever. Chant but, but you know what, Chantel? Though? Well, let me just say that. I gotta share this for y'all. I gotta share this. Because they're both looking great. Girl, you better do it. Go on, make your money. Because I am not mad at you. At all. She's beautiful. I think she's just as pretty. Uh, go on, make your money with your beauty. And Pedro, good luck to you too, sir. Good luck in your future selling real estate. You went on, got that real estate license. You're becoming one of their top 
producers. You make it happen, young man, sir. You better do it. Both of you guys deserve a fabulous future. I root for the both of you. Um, together, separate, sounds like it, looks like it's going to be separate, and that's okay. You're young. Go on, start fresh, and, and have some, ha I hope everybody has learned from this situation. Um, the two of you, you know, looks ain't everything, Chantel, but you bad, girl. I ain't gonna lie, you bad, but the light bulb, when you open your mouth, oh my God, when you open your mouth. Y'all, please have a wonderful day. Have a beautiful day. Please like, subscribe to my station. I hope you have fun. I hope to see you guys in the chat one day. And um, so we can just really start having a good time with this. And, and, and we can and get some good nuggets out of this. Let's get some good nuggets on how what makes life easier for all of us and how to communicate well and how to be our best and all that good stuff. I love y'all on today. Subscribe. Subscribe and I will see y'all later. <laughs> Have a good day.